Let's talk about Loyal, Kevin. Let's talk about it the way it actually is on the release. Yeah, I will. Um, you know, Dream Away was, that was actually, I think that was the spearhead of, of everything. Um, I had come up, Stockwell gave me the music, and, and I was up here recording it. And uh, that, was, that was the start of it, because that song was pretty powerful. Like I was saying, I mean, the lyric that I wrote from, from the word Dream Away was kind of subjective, and you know, it's the concept of, of our capabilities as human beings to just, when it gets down to it, to surrender and let it go. You know, dream it away, <clears throat> basically. You know, all the pain and suffering. And that may sound, uh, that, I, that doesn't mean to minimize the problems and the struggles in the world, you know, but then again, it's to, to remember and to be aware that that we have that capability to dream away. So the whole idea, dream away, dream away, let it go, dream away. It was just a, it was just a, you know, just let it go. Kind of a mantra to dream away, let it go. Just kind of a cognitive state, you know. I really liked it. And everyone in the band liked the song, so it was kind of like, wow, what did Ted and Kevin do, you know? <clears throat> and so it laid the groundwork to, well, let's keep going with some Ted and Kevin stuff. Dream Away is the very first song that Kevin Curry and I ever wrote. It was the second song that I wrote for this project, the first one being Shine, which I wrote with Rick Hogan. But this was the first one that Kevin Curry and I, where we realized that we actually had something, that we spoke each other's unspoken language. Dream Away was uh, written, uh, this nice acoustic song that kind of moved forward, but it was very much, my thinking on this was, hey, sometimes you just gotta think positive. It might be, you might not be able to see your way through this, you've gotta imagine it, you've got to have the vision, and you gotta dream your way through to greatness. As I've mentioned, typically the way Kevin and I worked is, I would write uh, uh, the song, and in this case I had the full demo done with drums, bass, guitars, and keyboards. I had a title and I had a story. And from my recollection of this, there were some, some great, great moments. And there was, I, I think, uh, Kevin, I, I don't know if you feel the same, but the strongest, most exciting moment of my collaboration, of writing Loyal, of any of the songs that we did on Loyal happened in Dreamway. The chorus initially was the backing part that you hear today. Dream away, dream away. Yeah. Just this nice uh, coupling of voices uh, between Kevin and between Steve Boys in this beautiful thing. And that was originally going to be the chorus without anything. I looked at Kevin and I just said, it's got to have something. And uh, at the time, both of us were smoking uh, at the time. And so what we would typically do is we would do uh, some takes. Um, I have a, a backyard and just beyond the camera here, there's a patio outside. So we could go outside, uh, we could monitor and listen uh, outside at a low volume, have a smoke and just kind of have a break. So we would be taking breaks. And during this particular time, I went outside and I scattered this thing. No, no lyrics. Um, I just scattered this thing. It's like, it's got to be this kind of thing and this is the blah, blah, blah over top of it. And Kevin looked at me and said, I got it. And he goes, can we take it right now? The final chorus that you hear on Dreamway, on Loyal, was the first and only take ever done. Kevin walked in, rattled off the lyrics, grabbed and made my scat better, and took this amazing thing and we looked at it and both of us felt chills. I remember the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. It was powerful, it was a magic moment. Our first song together. And when we did that, we looked at each other and we were like, oh my God, there is really something here. When we were outside and you were saying, because we had that uh, dream away, dream away, as the chorus, and then you were saying, oh, there's something needs to go, da, 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 da. something needs to be going on underneath there. You know, that, and at first I was like, really? You know, because I really like the dream away, dream away, let it go. And, and you were, 
you were solid on it, so I knew it, it was going to happen. So I was, I got it, and it was no confusion, no illusion. Got it rolling, and then basically went in, and it was. And so it, it and it is the crux of what Dream Away is, you know? There's nothing left in space and time, you know? Let it go, you know? Realize that it's here, you know? It's now. That was awesome. Um, we then played it for Al and Steve, and Carl wasn't part of it. Actually, at that point, we were a four-piece. I'm playing guitar and keyboards on this this version. And uh, we played it for them, and I remember Alan seeing his eyes, and Alan White's a, a, a funny guy. Um, I've got some great stories, and we'll talk about it when we get to it to another track, but Alan will never compliment Bruce, and he'll tell everyone else around that it's great, but he'll never say anything. But you will know if he likes it because you'll get word through the back channel and you'll actually see him. You'll see just a couple tells on Alan White's face when he likes it. And I noticed those tells. So we knew we had something. And then Kevin did an amazing job on, on the lyrics and fleshing this out. There's a couple lines in there that are very important to me. The, the losing one, I'm losing one. Um, I was going through a, a divorce at the time and those types of things, that was the, the heaviness for me. And I wanted to dream into a better place. Um, so that's what really resonated with me. And Kevin was able to take, you know, this, this soundscape, this music, this concept, and fashion something, I think, magical out. Yeah, it was. It was a powerful song. You're exactly right. I remember White's, the White songs, you know, I think that displays that, yeah, we were. And it was going to be fun. And, and it was something that was worth, uh, was worth going out and doing. Yeah. The formation of the band uh, really started off as uh, uh, Alan and I had been playing in Merkaba. Alan and I had played in Treason before. You know, Steve had been part of a, of a number of uh, projects, both uh, with Treason and, of course, uh, being a key member of Merkaba with Kevin. And kind of throwing all this stuff together, um, we had a number of different uh, starts, and uh, half of the, the record on Loyal, I'm playing guitar and keyboards before we brought Carl in. Um, so White Songs, and getting ready for that show at the Premier Club, uh, which was about uh, a little over 1,100 seats, uh, I think the capacity was 1,150, 1,200, something like that. Um, and so that was really the first time that the classic version of, of White uh, played together all the material. So uh, when I listened to, to Dream Away, for example, um, Carl did a wonderful job pulling off all the guitar parts uh, that I had put on uh, on the Loyal version and, and added actually quite a bit more of the, the slide uh, wah solo that he does just before the, the end final chorus is just brilliant. It's just it's wonderful and magnificent and majestic. Um, and so this was really the first time that we had actually played together and integrated. Um, and it was a fun time for me because I, I approach guitar not through the eyes of a guitar player. I do what sounds best in my head. So uh, on Way You See Me, for example, there's a couple uh, guitar lines here and there, some little solos that bounce in between your vocal. Um, and I remember when, when Carl heard them, he said, well, that's really strange. A guitar player wouldn't do that. And I said, well... Uh, it sounds right to me. So uh, he would play these things, and I think his interpretation of them uh, far exceeded uh, really what, what the initial idea was. Um, and so that kind of back and forth and figuring out uh, how we were going to play these songs together. Carl uh, learning the parts that I had played, um, and he was very faithful uh, to, the, to what we had done on, on Loyal. Uh, Dreamway, I think, live sounds uh, just amazing. I actually think the White Songs version of Dreamway is the best one I've ever heard um, from any of the, the three, is it three recordings we have of that? Well, yeah, and and I think what you're saying there is, uh, and what I like, what I'm hearing is at that point, yeah, that was the first time. What White Songs is, is that is all of the first, of the first time. 
coming from you know players who are friends and players who have been playing you know each amongst us of course at all white everyone's well aware of what he's been doing in his life but all of us have been playing you know right. and uh, and then we just being from the north you know we're kind of like connected out here in the northwest through a variety of things that were explained earlier right. and you know and bam here's that first thing and the intention was to go play i think you know when i think back then that was one that was one of those things of you know the intention was clear the whole way through it you know from the start at least to me is that it was starting out as it was fun uh it was it was enjoyable it, it was kind of a, like a, a natural uh thing that was happening because of what was going on with treason and, and whale hogan and merkaba and Alan White in the picture here and all of this whole thing and so as it was growing it had actually reached that next point with all good positive energy of intention to um, you know just to play and uh, hey here we are with this so here's the next thing oh let's see yeah it is it was okay you know we're good to go then